for joining today. I appreciate everybody's attendance. I'm going to see if I can share my screen here. I do have slides, uh, unlike poor Jason, who is suffering today. Um, so without further ado, um, I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Philip Goodrich. As Jason said, I run Partnerships and Alliances for Hypori. And I wanted to start by giving you first a little bit of a background on the company, some of the problems that we saw out there as challenges. And then from there, dive into a live product demonstration. Um, so hold on to your hat, folks. Here we go. Um, so a um, uh, little introduction about the company. We were founded back in 2012. Um, our sister company, that's a defense contractor, Intelligent Waves, actually was looking for a solution for one of their customers and um, found, you know, found Hypori and also found out that we could buy them. So they purchased the company, put some research and um, development funds into it. And then we spun out as a separate company uh, last summer. Um, currently over 50,000 licenses to date. And we are, uh, we laid claim to fame that we are the largest BYOD solution in the Department of Defense and Intelligence community. And you can see there on the screen, uh, some of our customers. Uh, the one thing I'd like you to remember, if you remember nothing else from today's presentation, is Hypori works, but we, we allow you to have access to all of your apps and all of your data, but we never allow any data to touch the device. So access to all your apps, all your data at the edge without letting data ever touch the device. So we'll go into a little bit of our management team. We are a service disabled veteran owned small business. Uh, both uh, Jared Shepard, Brian Kowalski and Matt Sterner are all uh, veterans and have a very distinguished background and history from the military. And uh, I also like to point out Brian Vetter, our chief architect. Um, the interesting thing about Brian and his team is his team of developers have put together 23 patents around the Hypori technology, not two or three, but 23. And that's kind of uh, why we've been selected by um, um, so many different customers, including we now claim uh, Microsoft as a customer. So I, we always like to start off, this is what I've referred to as our obligatory marketing slide, but we always like to kind of highlight the problem. My favorite one here is that, yes, Jeff Bezos phone was hacked by the Saudi crown prince. So yes, it's okay to panic, but everybody's aware that this is an issue. It's a problem. The threat landscape keeps evolving and getting wider every day. Um, and so we always want to point out these five challenges with mobility. So if you're going to do um, company provided device, the cost there is huge. I mean, you got to buy the device, you got to provision it, you got to get the data plan, you got to get essentially a full time employee to manage it. And then that's before you load on any kind of VPM or mobile device management um, uh, applications on top of it. And heaven forbid you ever have a breach because the cost of security breaches seems to go up exponentially month over month. Um, from a security perspective, if you've ever had someone lose a device or if a device is stolen and they drop it in a Faraday bag, and uh, once, that, once, that's, once it's in a Faraday bag, they can't see it. You can't even enact MDM uh, software. Um, so they can get to take the device someplace and basically uh, take all the data off of it. And now you've got a huge problem on your hands. Um, from a privacy perspective, we hear this a lot from our customers is that they don't want big brother employer looking and seeing what they're doing on their phone. They don't want to give them access to anything on their phone. And when they have to load on MDM software, a lot of them kind of shy away. And that's a lot of them will just say, well, look, then you just give me a company phone if that's you know the way we want to play. Um, we like to point out continuity of operations from this perspective. So if I, if I lose my phone, or let's say I, I walk outside and drop it and it's damaged. Um, to get a new phone, especially if it's company furnished, can take days, if not weeks, to get a new one out. You gotta buy the phone, get the data plan, get everything reloaded. With Hypori, I can essentially drive to Walmart or Best Buy, get a burner phone, get some minutes, load it on there, download the app, and in less than 30 minutes, I'm back up and running. So a pretty, pretty quick way to, to guarantee continuity of operations. And from a compatibility interoperability perspective, we work with any Android phone or tablet, any iOS phone or tablet, or any Windows 10 device. So you can basically use us from any device anywhere on the planet. So here's our solution. So we, as we mentioned earlier, we are a virtual device and we leave zero data at rest on the device. 
And of course, you know, we have to ask, you know, so, so why us? Well, because you can use us from any device. You can actually put your most sensitive data all the way out to the edge for use and for access without having to worry about any of it being compromised. We, we get, we become a very cost effective way to securely provide that data. And um, we also protect your employees privacy all the while that we're doing that. So here's how it works. So we essentially are taking um, an encrypted pixel stream and sending it through what I finally refer to sometimes as a triple layer VPN tunnel out to the endpoint device. And then the endpoint device is only sending touch point information back to the data center. So no data ever leaves the data center. All we're doing is sending an encrypted pixel stream out. It's a lot of times people refer to us as VDI on steroids. Um, that's a kind of an accurate representation. Um, but because of the way we deliver encrypted pixels out and just touch points back, that prevents people from being able to do man in the middle types of attacks. So when we get down in here, um, some more of the challenges that, that, we, um, that we like to address. Um, the two columns I wanna really focus on here is the second and the fourth column. Um, people ask us all the time, so how did you, you know, become the, you know, the top provider of choice by all the different branches of the military and in the intelligence community? Well, essentially we passed just about every sniff test that they could throw at us. We've been red teamed by various groups and none of them have ever, have ever been able to break our device. Um, but the big thing I like to talk about is that users being able to work with something that they're familiar with and that's, that's um, you know, uh, something that they are used to using every day that looks just like their own phone, makes the um, user um, accessibility, making the, the accessibility easy and making the ease of use just like they're using their everyday phone basically makes adoption go right up through the roof. So we offer our product two different ways. Uh, we do it either as a cloud-based solution from Azure or AWS, or we do it as an on-premise appliance. Um, the on-premise appliance is a little bit more expensive and we do have several federal customers that they have to have that for different uh, security requirements. Um, but we do see the cloud marketplace really starting to take off and, and go um, uh, grow exponentially. Um, now, at this point, I want to kind of stop here and switch gears and go over to my actual device. Let me get this thing powered up here. You got to love the joys of doing a live demo. And here we go. Live demo time. That's it. Where's my <laughs> phone go? All right. Let's see here. And five, four, three, two, one. We are there. Let's see. Come on. Oh, you got to love it, right? We're all rooting for you here, Phil. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm, yeah it's like, come on, let's go. Why isn't it, <laughs> why is it not showing up on my screen? Uh, let's try this one more time. Let's go. Okay, and give me one second more. Come on. Oh, it's hiding. Hang on here. All right. Ah, awesome. Okay. All right, Jason, let me move this. Can you see my phone? We can see the phone, yes. All right, yeah. So this is my actual personal phone. Yes, I have bacon as my wallpaper. Um, so you can see I've got all my typical apps and everything loaded on here. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that I have the Hyporia app down there. So if I tap on that, I can open, open it up and you'll see, I actually have three different instances that I use. I have a, an Azure demo that we have up in our Azure instance. I have a green environment, uh, one that I typically use for demos like this because it pretty much gives me open access. 
And then I also have a classified one for our work area through our sister company, Intelligent Waves. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into the green environment. Now, we, we use several different ways for people to access. So typically they'll use username and password. We also work with two-factor authentication companies like RSA and YubiKey. Um, we also can use, as you can see on my phone, we can use the um, other access um, capabilities such as facial recognition or fingerprint. And let's see if fingerprint works for me today. It was giving me a little bit of trouble earlier. Oh, there it worked. And there's my virtual phone right there. So you can see I've got a bunch of different apps loaded up on there. Um, you can see I can actually go into my email. There's the little high pour sound. And I can actually see how far behind I am on some of my emails getting back there. Um, I can also go in and this is the one thing we like to do is um, I'll, I'll actually access the Hypori camera. Now what the Hypori camera does is it will access the physical camera on my device. And we're going to take a picture of Jason so you guys know that I'm not faking this one. Now if I close out of that and I go out of my app and I go into the photos, there's no photo of Jason in there anywhere. But if I go out of my personal device, go back into Hypori and go into the gallery, there's, there's smiling Jason right there. You can so keep that one, Phil. You. That's all yours I mean, forever, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Jason, you're now in the cloud, safe and sound forever and ever, amen. Um, <laughs> so that kind of that shows um, how that works. Um, and I don't know, let's see, let's go back. Um, you can also see that um, when, um, and I'll explain and show this a little bit more later, we can actually put together um, different templates and, and ways um, that you can either grant or limit access to different apps on the phone, uh, depending on who the user is. Um, and what I'm going to do from that point, I'm going to stop sharing now. And let me go over to, I like that comment. It's not a live demo if something doesn't go wrong. Um, let me go and share. Next thing I want to show you guys is the admin panel. All right, can you see that, Jason? Yes, sir. All right, very good. So when you go into our administrative panel, this is where you go to do all your provisioning and management of devices. And I always like that because to me, this is where the real power of Hypori lives. Um, and when you first um, access it and go into the panel, the, the kind of the landing page is the dashboard. So you can kind of see, you know, the number of users, number of compute nodes, um, the virtual CPUs, cores, everything, you can see how many devices are active, kind of what the usage has been. Um, I can actually go in and look and see how things are configured. And if I have an on-premise or I have multiple on-premise locations, I can actually see where they're located. So you can see that this on-premise or th this particular um, set is running at our data center down in Austin, Texas. Um, the other thing that you can do, and this is very interesting, um, is we actually can, uh, I talked earlier about how we can actually create specific templates. And we kind of do it two different ways. We go first through what we call flavors, which is basically it allows us to kind of figure out how much virtual CPU, RAM, storage, and everything we give you. And then we actually will go in and give you um, an actual background that has either a certain set of apps or, um, um, put on. So like, let's say you have someone that's a lower level, maybe just an hourly employee. Um, you can give them a high pori phone and all they could have on it is maybe um, Outlook, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and that's it. You could have someone that's a little bit higher up and you give them access to both a, a CRM or an ERP tool. Um, essentially, if it's available through, through the App Store, you can download it into the Hypori client. Um, or if you have someone um, uh, that is uh, like at the higher end, uh, higher executive type level, you can give them full access to anything, or you can even give them access to the App Store so they can download whatever apps they want to. Um, if we go in and look at users, so let's go find test accounts. So you can see all the different users in here. What's interesting, I'm going to go pick on myself. So I can actually go in from the admin panel here. And in one click, I can stop my device. Or with one click, I can pause it. I can reboot the device. I can go in and look at um, specific user details. So I can actually see what apps I'm using and how, how much I've used them. I can actually see of the allotted disk space, how much of it 
how much of it's been uh, used up. I actually purposefully went in before this demo and uh, deleted a lot of pictures because I was <laughs> I had a lot of videos and pictures in there. I can actually see how many sessions they've had over the, uh, uh, um, I can't remember how many, how, how long a period of time it is, um, but you can see how long they've been on. I can actually see how much data they've consumed, whether it was either via Wi-Fi or on their cellular plan. And this is really handy if you have a pay, uh, a bill back or you pay um, employees for use of their data plan, you can actually go in here and see how much of it they were actually on there. I, I can also go and see what locations I was at when I was on the Hypore app. So this only tracks where you were when you were actually using the Hypore app. So you can see, I, yes, I was in Tampa um, or um, last week for a conference. I go down to Austin quite frequently. And you can see I live just outside of uh, beautiful Fort Worth, Texas. You can see the little bouncing ball. That's where I'm located right now. Now, the other thing that is pretty cool is if I'm going to see if I can get into, where is it? We'll go here. Um, I can actually go and see a screenshot of what I'm looking at. And this is a point in time capture. Let's see if I can refresh this. You can see I'm looking at the logon page for Salesforce right now. So that's actually what's on my phone right there. I don't know if you can see that, all right, there you go. So you can see I'm actually at the logon page for that. Um, let's see, we also have up here, you, you can see all the different tasks that are going on and the bevy of alerts that are there. Um, and that's pretty much in a quick overview of how um, the admin panel works. And I'm going to stop sharing and see if there's questions that Dane hasn't been able to look. Oh, thank you. I like the, uh, this is really great technology. <laughs> and, 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 and it is, you know, it, it is funny because when we talked to um, the intelligence community in particular, um, uh, it, it was kind of interesting. You know, these are guys that typically go in through a secure gate into a secure property through a secure doorway to get into an office that has a secure internet um, and then they get into classified um, systems from there and now they're working from home on an unprotected internet so they came to us at the beginning of covid and said we need your help how can we you know how can we get people to do work when they're when they're not allowed to go back in the office and so that was a great shot in the arm for us um, helped boost it, um, our user community up quite a bit and as they got um, more and more familiar with it, they realized that this is just like using a regular phone. And so it really started to take off and take on a life of its own. And so uh, now we have tons of people um, using it. And I'm gonna see if I can go over the Q&A. So Bill next. Yeah, we, have, we do have some questions coming in here. So, uh, and, and Dane started answering some in text, but I'll, I'll ask you, give you the chance to answer that in voice as well. So the first one, what if uh, I have a legacy desktop? Can I still use the service? Yes, you can. So um, the and, and I don't know how legacy if you're talking like, you know, <laughs> Windows XP or what, but uh, um, it, a lot of times what we'll do is during the, the engagement period when we're, we're trying to size the, the system and the implementation for you, we'll kind of take a look at that and make sure that you won't have any compatibility issues. Um, but typically so far, every single person we've walked into, um, most all of them have currently supported desktops. Um, but that's that's not to say that if you're running an older version, it would still work because basically all we're doing is we're just presenting um, an Android phone um, up, you know, for your employees to look at. So if it's an app or um, that that they can get through the Android Play Store, it's one that we can use occasionally. Um, and this we do this on a on a kind of a case by case basis. If you have a homegrown app and there's an APK for it, a lot of times we can successfully sideload that app into your in uh, your Hypori uh, virtual phone as well. Awesome, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, this is a VDI on steroids. So what differentiates this solution from Citrix, Microsoft, TeamViewer, et cetera? Yeah. So, so typically what VDI does, VDI does like entire screen scrapes and sends those down, down the line that way. Whereas we use an encrypted pixel stream. So it's much, much more, uh, much more high definition, much more exact, um, and the performance typically is is much higher uh, than what you're used to seeing um, 
from a from a VDI instance. We've had people that have had VDI um, that started using Hypori, and they said the overall experience is is much better, much more responsive. And um, especially if you can imagine when you're in Azure, uh, one of the things um, that we like to do is is if we do a one on one uh, demo for you is we'll go into Azure and do a speed test, and we typically see like three gigs per second up and three gigs per second down. Because you have to remember when you're using Hypori, all of your applications are running at data center speed. So they're running at the speed of the network and the servers and the storage inside the data center, not at the speed of what's on your device. There you go. Isn't it true that it can allow companies to let your personal device run company apps? So that gets back to, so say that one more time, I just wanna make sure I have it correct. Isn't it true? So uh, yeah, it's true <laughs> um, that it can allow companies to let your personal device run company apps. Correct. So if you have, for example, um, like uh, if you have a company instance of Slack, we use Salesforce. Um, and even if you have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, a homegrown app and, and an APK that we can run in, they basically can get to all those apps from their virtual phone, but none of those apps ever have to reside on their personal physical device. So it's all going to be accessed virtually. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, for hourly employees, is there a way to tie access to their work schedule to prevent unauthorized overtime? So the short answer is yes. However, there, there's a little bit of uh, customization work that we need to do. Um, we, we can set it up where their profile only allows them access during certain hours of the day. Um, we have been able to uh, um, work with someone where they could only access it from the company's uh, Wi-Fi network. Um, but those are, those are things that, like I said, require a little bit of customization. Um, typically, when those come up and they're a requirement, we usually can work with you and make those things become a reality. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, how is it possible to operate a virtual device over cellular networks? So when, when and this is a great question because I, I still laugh every time I'm out, like I, I've got two bars of cell coverage and I'm still on my Hypori phone and I'm on a Zoom call using Hypori. Um, so when Hypori was first written and designed, we were on Gen 3 networks. So it had to be extremely bandwidth efficient, extremely processor efficient, and, and because of those two, we use very little battery, if almost at all. So when you're actually running Hypora on your phone, if you go into the system, monitor your phone and look at the resources, we're using very, very little. So because we were designed back in Gen 3 days, when you get out now on Gen 4 and Gen 5 networks, we, we, still, we still work. So essentially, if you have access to a cell tower, you can make Hypori work. Awesome. Under IRS regulations and audits, a company or individual, uh, uh, sorry, under IRS regulations um, and audits, a company or individual, they have to show or separate personal use from company use. Does Hypori allow record keeping to separate the two? Absolutely. So that's something, um, if, if you wanted to see that in a, in a specific demo, I could set up a time to do that with you. Um, I couldn't see who that was. Uh, that asked the question, but would definitely welcome the opportunity to show you how that how we do that. Because remember, I mean, we're, we're being used by people in the military and intelligence community that the IRS uh, regulations are child play to them, to be quite frank and honest. Um, but yes, we can actually do that. And we can actually show you how you can uh, keep track and logs of, of that in case you ever do uh, have an audit, you have to show an audit trail that proves the separation. Cool. Um, a very blunt question here. What is the pricing structure? So that's a great question that I'm not going to answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we it's and well, it, it's kind of a sliding scale model. So it, it varies depending on the number of users. Naturally, the more users you have, uh, the higher it gets. Um, just to give you an idea. So if it's for Azure and I'm thinking a minimum of 200 users, we would be looking at probably right around $4.99 per user per year. Fantastic, thank you very much. Does this work alongside on, on Microsoft? On-premise goes, on-premise costs go, go up quite a bit because there's a lot more involved and we have to basically build the appliance and put it on site and everything. So, Naturally. but if, if that's a requirement, we can definitely do that. 
Brilliant. Does this work alongside Microsoft Endpoint Management? So I'm trying to think of what which one they're talking about because um, Microsoft is a customer and we did work with Intune um, as part of our deployment on Azure. And we're actually deployed in, um, I'm not sure how familiar people are, but we're in IL-5 with, uh, of Azure. Um, so it's in their, their um, classified network area. Um, uh, specifically Intune. Yeah, so we do work with Intune, absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, what clients are supported? You meant, I'll demo the mobile phone. What about tablets, Chromebooks, desktops? Absolutely. So yeah, so um, any, any iOS phone or tablet, any Android, and there's 23 different flavors of Android. So any Android, um, tablet or phone, or any Windows 10 uh, desktop or laptop. And that includes Chromebooks. So I've actually uh, been able to demo um, and use Hypoi from a Chromebook. Um, I have actually have my uh, my Windows 10, 10, you can't see it, Windows 10 desktop right here that I that I use and I use Hypoi on that. Um, and all the app, the apps are free to download from the, the Play Store, the App Store, or the Windows Store. So getting your employees access to it is a matter, uh, a quick and easy matter of um, just downloading an app. And the way we typically um, get them enrolled is we send them an email that brings them to a website with a specific QR code just for them. They take a picture, for, they open the app, take a picture of the QR code with their phone and that activates their virtual phone. Excellent, thank you very much. Well, that brings an end to the line of questioning here. I do have one final question for you, which I'd love uh, to, to ask and for you to be candid about. Um, so ultimately, you know, when you're posed with the question, um, why high pori? Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I, I look at it from from this point of view. It, my my data is is my gold, you know, and I got to protect my gold at all costs. And and the threat landscape out there just gets bigger and bigger every day. It just is expanding like crazy. Um, so if I can get access to the, to, the, to the most critical and most sensitive data that my employees need to, to do their business day in and day out. And I can bring that all the way to the edge without having to worry about any kind of data leakage. Um, that's, that's why you use Hypori. It's, it's, it's just the most secure way to access company-owned data that the, that's available today, in my humble opinion. Brilliant, well said. Um, well, uh, I do want to give you ability for Dane to say a quick hello, everyone. Uh, we kind of stole your thunder a little bit here, Dane, um, in going into Q&A, but if you want to turn your camera on, he did get involved in the chat a little bit here, but I want to give him the opportunity to just say a quick hello to everybody. There he is. Um, he's, he's still on, on mute. As well. and he's on <laughs> as well. There we go. Thunder truly. Yeah, it's great to have Dane help along because I can't, I can't do chat and talk at the same time. I'm, you know, I, I have trouble walking and chewing gum, so... <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Don't worry about it. Uh, well, that brings a close to session number one, folks. Uh, Phil did a fantastic job of just uh, going nice. through that and answering all the, que all the questions that everyone has, which means we actually have some time to give back to you, which is always amazing and I know greatly appreciative of everyone. So um, we'd like to obviously ask the audience to join me in a collective virtual round of applause Thank for... Yeah, Phil, thank you very much. Really and like I said it. earlier, if any, anyone would like to have a, a more tailored demo, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, feel free to reach out to me and we can set that up and, and do that for you. Definitely, folks. Um, and likewise, obviously, um, you know the Sync crew. So if you are looking forward to having a chat and you'd like us to help facilitate, then just uh, let us know and uh, we can help. But yeah, go find Phil on uh, LinkedIn and connect with him and have a chat. Um, some 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 big things coming Hope Always way. So really exciting stuff. Thank you very, very much again for taking the time to share this with us and even a live demo put in there as well. Um, nicely executed. So thank you again. So everybody, um, that brings a close to session number one. Thanks for